When it comes to making money in little time, profit crafting could very well be the most efficient method in Path of Exile. Or at least it's the most efficient method that I know of. And so today, I wanted to craft 30 Stygian vises to hopefully give a frame of reference for how you might profit craft for yourself. My goal is to spend as little as possible and for the resulting items to sell for at least one divine. Something that, spoiler alert, I was mostly successful in. Now, if sitting down and buying a whole bunch of belts and a whole bunch of essences isn't really your thing, there are other ways to efficiently profit craft as well. One of them is simply play a meta build and then craft upgrades. I did that a lot previously as I was playing Righteous Fire Juggernaut and I needed a lot of upgrades. So therefore, it was quite profitable for me to craft Righteous Fire upgrades, keep the best ones and sell everything else to other players. Or alternatively, if you see something that looks like it's gonna blow up, you can make a bunch of items for it and hope that actually happens. I'm sure everyone who crafted a lot of Explody Bows early in Crucible and held onto them were absolutely thrilled with the results. Though do be careful when doing that second method because sometimes you're stuck with a stock of unsellable garbage items that, well, no one wants, unfortunately. So I bought 40 Stygian Vises for 360 Chaos, 120 Fertile Catalysts for four Divines, 468 Deafening Essence of Torment for 12 Divines, and then just for fun, a little later on in the crafting process, I also bought around three Divines in Prismatic Catalysts and three Divines in Deafening Essence of Envy. My goal here really was to make Shock Avoid Belts, crafted with Deafening Essence of Torment. And because I was rolling one suffix, ideally I wanted Resistances, Life Regeneration, or Strength as my other suffix. Then I wanted, say, 80 plus life as a prefix. This is why I used the Fertile Catalysts, and also because they were a lot less expensive than Prismatic Catalysts. When I was doing this, Fertile Catalysts were about 30 to a Divine, and Prismatic were about 14 to a Divine, making Prismatic twice as expensive. And unfortunately, Deafening Essence of Envy was about 30 to a Divine, and Essence of Torment was about 40 to a Divine. So the whole Envy thing didn't actually work out. More about that in just a minute. To start with, I did a test run. Remember, I was looking for Shock Avoid, 80 plus life, and then Resistances, Life Regeneration, or Strength. I also kept an eye out for Flask Mods, but single and dual Flask Belts are exceedingly rare, so I didn't expect to sell too many of them. Now, after I finished crafting, I spent a little bit of time annulling belts with bad modifiers. Most of the time, this just bricked it. However, occasionally it opened up a suffix or maybe even let me craft life as a prefix and overall fixed the item. Of course, the ideal when your prefixes are full is to have an open suffix so you can beast craft prefix to suffix, but in a lot of cases that didn't happen and I had to take the more risky annul route. I also spent a little bit of time just using the crafting bench to add things like life and resistances. Or if a belt was pretty much perfect as is, I just tossed on increased damage. And after that, I put the first 10 belts up for sale. I did this because I wanted to get some cash flow, or some divine flow as you will, while purchasing supplies to roll the rest. And sure enough, several sold. First I got a sale for 3 divines, then I got a sale for 5 divines, and then a belt sold for 11 divines. Now in total, I spent about 27.5 divines on this project. 6.4 of which was the silliness with the prismatic catalysts and essence of envy, that I don't particularly advise. So even in just those first few sales, I had recouped most of my initial investment. And keep in mind, that was on a test set of 10 belts, not the full 40 that I'd ultimately roll. Or I guess 30 if we're only counting for ones I rolled with the Essence of Torment, since I did 10 separately with Envy. One other thing that I noticed is Strength belts were valued much higher than in previous leagues. This is probably due to the tattoos. Generic Life and Resistances with Shock Void sells well, unsurprisingly. And Flask mods are much harder to sell than they've been in past leagues which means less people are playing Pathfinder and more people are playing things with tattoos. I guess kind of unsurprising when you put it that way. So then I did the same thing with the Essences of Envy on Resistance Catalyzed Stygians and also all the rest of my Essence of Torment on Life Catalyzed Stygians. And then just like with my first test run, I had a lot of potentials where I needed to either annul them, exalt slam them, or beastcraft them which like before mostly went well, but in a few cases did go poorly. And so then anything that failed or bricked, I just threw more essences at it, ultimately crafting 40 belts that I was happy to sell, all of which were at least one divine. For my price checking methodology, uh, I'll be honest with you, I price checked about the first 30 and then just guessed on the last 10. A good number of those last 10 sold, and if they didn't sell, I lowered the price by a couple divines if it was towards the more expensive end, 
or by about half a divine if it was around the two or three divine range. And after lowering prices for a few times, most of my belts have sold at about 48 hours after I started this whole project. Now, one thing I noticed is the Essence of Envy belts did not sell very well. Number one, Chaos Res is a lot easier to get due to tattoos, therefore less in demand. And number two, a lot of people are using Storm Shroud, so Shock Avoid is valuable and not many people are crafting the belts. Therefore, to roll Deafening Essence of Envy, I was not only spending more per roll, more per belt, but they were selling for less. So that was just a terrible idea, but hey, it was a fun side project on top of all this, and I did end up recouping the six-ish divines I spent on that, so no real loss. It just wasn't nearly as profitable, because I got back about 70 divines within the first 48 hours, meaning I not only doubled my money, but I made a handy profit on top. And I'd estimate that roughly 10 divines were from the Envy belts, and the other 60 were from the Torment, meaning the Torment was about tripling my money, and the Envy was under doubling it. When it comes to selling items and profit crafting, this is where I see a lot of people mess up. They get impatient. And sure, if your item doesn't sell for a day, unless it's exceedingly valuable or niche, you probably should lower the price. But if it doesn't sell for an hour, there's a pretty good chance there's just no one in the hour who's looking for your specific item. Now, if it's a generic life resist shock avoid belt, the price is probably wrong if it's not selling pretty quickly. But if it has chaos res, well, less people are going to use it, but it's also going to be more valuable because it's much harder to roll. If it has life regen, an RF jug will absolutely love it, and I sold several to RF jugs, but it took longer because only RF jugs were looking for it rather than RF jugs and everyone else wearing a storm shroud. Same thing for the flask belts. A pathfinder or maybe a ward looper might want it, but most other people didn't, so they sold much worse. And in the past, strength was in the same niche. Either I sell it at a price where it's just extra life, or I sell it to someone who's actively looking for strength. This league, though, everyone's actively looking for strength, because either you need it for stat requirements, or you need it to replace more strength on your tree with awesome tattoos. Therefore, I found that strength belts actually sold equally well with generic resistance belts. And in my first set of essences, I probably rolled over more strength mods than I should have. This is because I was used to the economy from last league rather than the economy from this league. And I also probably destroyed the market. Because here's the last important thing to remember about profit crafting. If after watching this video, your initial reaction is, all right, I'm going to do exactly what 10 did. I'm going to craft shock avoid belts and sell them and focus on strength belts or belts with resistances. All of a sudden, there's going to be a bunch of people with belts to sell and not more people who need a belt. Therefore, the price will go down. Furthermore, because there's more pressure on the supply for materials, such as Essence of Torment, their price will probably go up. When it comes to profit crafting, it's always really important to either look for an increase in demand, an increase in supply, or simply do something that a lot of people aren't doing. This is why crafting, let's just say, energy shield gear, which isn't really in the meta, means your items will sell slower, but you'll have absolutely huge profit margins because someone playing a CI build is going to be super, super happy that you're the one guy in the market selling the exact item they need. So in this case, I hope your takeaway isn't that you just copy my strategy and make infinite money. This can be an infinite money glitch. The best infinite money glitch I ever made was profit crafting on rings in Legion, where I made multiple mirrors literally by just crafting minus mana cost, because there was an insane demand, almost every player equipped two of them, sometimes three if you counted the amulet, and the craft cost around 40 exalts to unlock, so most people weren't willing to pay that. They'd buy a finished item instead. But outside of infinite money glitches like that, where you're really abusing the economy and it only lasts for a short time before the bubble bursts, the best advice I can give when it comes to profit crafting is always try different things. And the best way to experiment is in upgrading your own gear. Don't just make one upgrade, make four or five and sell the spares. In some cases, you will lose money, especially if you're crafting using an inefficient method. But as you practice, and as you get better at learning these, maybe use resources like Craft of Exile or Maxwell's Crafting Guides, which I'll link down below, learn the methods, get better, and sure enough, your profits will rise. And that kind of trial and error is exactly how I learned to profit craft way back when. And so that I'm curious, have you done any crafting for profit specifically, rather than just upgrades? And if not, do you plan to try it after this video? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. And if instead of gaining money, you want to see me gambling money, get subscribed because in an upcoming live stream, I'm going to be gambling quite a bit of currency to hopefully hit something awesome. But who knows? 
everything could blow up and I could end up with no currency at all. Now, if you need some money to start crafting and you're looking for something else to watch, I'll link to a video on how I farmed my first 100 divines in Trial of the Ancestors. That'll be up in the card and down in the description below. Before I go, I want to take a moment to give a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. Link to that is also down below, and even as low as $1 a month really helps and goes a long way to supporting the channel. With that said, I hope you learned something, thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you again sometime soon.